Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me during my Where's Shmi Euro Tour with the two cars where I'm currently in Torino, Italy at the home of Ital Design. I'm going to be going for a visit to take a look around but this is where they create the likes of their hypercar, the Zero Uno, also the Nissan GTR 50 by Ital Design. But we're going to see some of the engineering, access to some pretty special areas. But to get started, in the building behind me we've got the museum and showroom where inside there are some cars that previously I didn't even know existed including Bugattis. We're going to start off in there then then we'll head over to see where they create and put together their ultra limited series production vehicles. So let's get started then today here at Ital Design. Let's go straight in then to take a look around and you can already see just inside the front door the Zero Uno is awaiting us. So come on in, let's explore the museum here at Ital Design to get a small sense of some of their history. And one of the first things that you realise are the sheer variety of different cars and projects that Ital Design have been involved with. So last year the company celebrated its 50th anniversary and through the five decades they've been involved in 60 million cars that are now out on the roads from the likes of the Fiat Panda and the Volkswagen Golf GTI through just behind me the DMC DeLorean. We've then got bespoke projects the Volkswagen W12, an electric car the GT0 just over there, also cars here based on a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. We've got a Bugatti tucked in at the back that's quite interesting too and just here the blue one I'm going to come and show you in a moment all the way to now making cars like this the ultra limited series production Zero Uno. This is actually the test car which I experienced a passenger ride in before at the Goodwood Festival of Speed hill climb but they've gone on to make five coupes and five duertas the open top version as well. We'll come back to this in a moment but coming straight through a few things to pick out but I'm going to beeline straight to this Bugatti. Now this is from 1999 five years before the Veyron was launched and it's actually called the Chiron the Bugatti 18 slash 3 Chiron and it has an 18 cylinder engine yes you heard that right 18 cylinders the Veyron went on to have a 16 cylinder but this is basically six three cylinder engines put together and you can see the distinct styling that has gone on to form in the current Bugattis the grille continued at the front the shapes and the lines. So this was kind of the concept for the Veyron five years before that was ever made. This car is just a model but there is another one out there that has the engine that runs. But have a look at this. Similarly to how the Veyrons and the Chirons now have the back opened up and that you can see the engine designed just like that. Really cool and I never knew that previously existed at all. Named Chiron after Louis Chiron, a Bugatti driver. But let's continue around. We'll come to the Mustang and the parkour in a second. Here at the back though is the EB112. Distinctly Bugatti when you look at the grille, the shape of the bonnet, the styling of it. But this is a luxurious four-seater from 1993. And inside, let me show you some of the technology. You're not going to believe what this car has just here. On the passenger side of the dashboard is a VHS player. That's a VHS, an old tape player, a uh, videotape player, but a four-seater, but still with that kind of curved back as well. Just delicately close that for the moment. So what else do we have around? So this is the GG50 based on a Ferrari 612. Again kind of a precursor to the FF and the GTC4 Lusso from 2005. The 612 was Ferrari's previous I suppose 2 plus 2 model but this gives it well slightly more of a rear hatch and well a decent amount of space for the rear seats as well back there. Of course clearly previous generation uh, to the FF and Lusso now. On this side, a car that I last saw, I think about six years ago, the Lamborghini Cala, the first Lamborghini actually that had a V10 in it from 1995, a complete one-off, and that's when I saw it on the Lamborghini 50th Anniversary Grande Giro, the Lamborghini owner's tour that they did around Italy. Coming up here then, the GT0. This is kind of cool if you ask me. Full electric car, electric motors up front and back. Very, very sleek look. Imagine if this got made. It'd be a really cool way to get around. Luggage space in the back, um, the rear glass window as well uh, over there. Oh, and that's quite nice as well. A full piece of glass at the back and a four-seater. Then we come past the Zero Uno, 
the W12 up here, W12 engine in a Volkswagen. That thing holds a lot of speed records. The DMC DeLorean, many people know. This is a prototype though. It's got the fuel filler here on the bonnet as opposed to the normal position, but with those gull wing doors that open upwards. Quick look there at the inside as well. And uh, what else do we have? Well, we went past the Panda and the Golf GTI, but who would have known that Ital Design were behind this? The car introduced to become the new people's car after the Beetle. Then here, you've got the Parkour, that off-roading off kind of super SUV, if we can call it that, basically. Slightly higher position, it can actually raise itself up quite significantly with the suspension, but carry a lot of power performance across, you know, the dunes in the desert or something. And then this, a project by Ford with Jujaro. This is, well, 2006. Mustang, but um, with a little bit of a difference, some very cool styling features. Look at the glass roof, comes all the way over, one single piece of glass through to the rear deck, and around the front, have a look at the grill. I love this. You've got the pony shape of the Mustang there inside integrated into the grill. So, not a bad little look there, just a small part uh, of the history, and uh, like I said, a Bugatti I didn't know about, the previous Chiron, we can literally say that. So we're going to continue our exploration after a quick look, I think, actually, at the Zero Uno. So Atal Design is now part of the Volkswagen Group, which means they can use some of the company's platforms. So in this case, you've got the 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10, over 600 horsepower, and some radical and aggressive design, proper visual drama. Only five of these in total, five of the open top duetas. But you look around it, just look at these styling cues, the louvres there on the arches, the way at the front, there's no bumper per se, just the way you have these various different fins and layers to the splitter, all carbon fibre, the full body is carbon. And then around the rear, this is the low drag setup with the normal wing. But again, look at that diffuser, look how open it is. The test car, the prototype car, uh, the one that they're using to drive out and about. And you can actually see here, the high downforce configuration on an earlier mold, so not the final car, but with the more aggressive rear wing. Anyway, very, very cool. So, not a bad place to begin. I just have to film what we're greeted by when we head on towards our next stop, which is the HMI. Look at how cool this building is in terms of the design as well. We're at the HMI lab, so let's have a look inside. This is all about the interface, and uh, this should be quite interesting. I've not seen anything like this before. Effectively, what we're looking at is a system that allows the seats to be moved to give you a feel of the ergonomics of the car. And this is really quite clever because it's linked up to virtual reality, which we're going to see more of later on. Currently set up like an Audi Q2, but the idea is that this can be used for a supercar or a super practical car just adjusting the way the whole configuration is set so that you get a sense for reaching the different controls. So literally, if I was sat inside here and I, oh, losing my sunglasses nearly there, and I took the virtual reality headset, you can see on the screen in front of me how you can literally look around and then get a sense for the seating position, the equipment. Obviously, we've got our door just here as well. This is crazy technology to help work on all sorts of future projects. It's not necessarily about the materials or the exact finish, but about the whole kind of ergonomics of it. Mind is blown. I've just come round to the other side. The system's been changed very quickly and you might notice this seat is sitting substantially lower. That's because it's in the configuration of the Zero Uno. So you can literally change it and you can see on the display now as well. And if I take the headset here, we're now looking around the inside of the Zero Uno Duetta with the roof open, literally just on the same unit with a different configuration. What technology is this? You might be wondering why I am now wearing a virtual reality headset. Well, on the turntable just here, I am currently looking at a white Zero Uno. I can walk around it, I can see the car as if it was physically just here. And if, for example, I'm looking at the door and I pinch my fingers, literally the door opens. Uh, we can open and close it. I can say commands, I can speak commands at it. For example, tap color red, and the car has turned to red. We can also look at the back wall where I've got a few other controls. So for example, we can take away the wings of the car. Just click those and the wings are basically vanishing. Now we have the car in its uh, appearance about. We can go back and just add those back in. And just like that, as if by magic, they're floating back towards the car. And um, yes, this is, this is quite surreal. You can imagine how this allows you to visualize how something looks change colour schemes, change the design, change the options, and even uh, projects beyond that. It's really totally crazy. This is really cool. 
from the virtual reality past the Lotus Esprit to what is called the Vision Lab, where inside you can see a huge variety of different materials and options for working on cars. And this is for both customers, but also OEMs wishing to work with Atel Design. They do a lot of projects. They're coming straight through here to the area of Zero Uno samples. So you can see all the different materials, everything available in the configurator can be seen and touched here for customers to see all the different options, the new materials that are being used, the leathers, the alcantaras, the stitching, the pipings, all the different effects, even completely unusual things here in these sample configurations available at the very back. Inside lots of different paint samples, I'm immediately drawn to this row of the different blues and purples. Very, very nice caliper options, leathers that you can see, new uh, new styles, new materials, new things, new thinking, of course building many prototypes and concepts, always looking towards the future of what might become um, used or become part in the future uh, of different cars and I love looking around these kind of things and just playing and imagining and dreaming different combinations what you could do what the different colors could become just exploring different styles there with the, the stripe up the center like the Italian flag different chromes all the different paint samples the drawers are all filled with no shortage uh, of different options as well even this for example lots of threads for the stitching this is absolute dreamland if you imagine or enjoy imagining future cars. Just explore and see around what they've got on show inside uh, this lab. Back into the virtual reality room, these are the five specs of the different Zero Unos. You can actually see some of the differences, the colours. Uh, we've just got it moving around a little bit. But the five different cars, starting with the, uh, the white one with the Tricolore style stripe on it, but the completely different configurations using the various different paints and samples that have been gone through. And you can even see uh, the slightly different wings on the cars from the, the four with the high downforce uh, different to the first car. But that's the different stages of the process going from visualizing it to seeing the materials to then seeing the cars there as renders as to what it will actually look like before it's assembled. I'm now in the ultra limited series assembly workshop. Behind me here you can see the Zero Uno Duerta but I'm going to come back to that in one second. There's something I want to show you just up here as we come past a few other new projects but this is the Nissan GTR 50 by Ital Design. This is currently actually the only one, the prototype, which means that's the very car that I got to test drive at the Dubai Autodrome, got an experience with from behind the wheel. I've also seen this car previously at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and quite recently as well at the New York International Auto Show, which means I've seen that exact car on three different continents and in quite a few different countries as well. But it's a collaboration between Nissan and Ital design both celebrating their 50th anniversaries just one year apart 50 of the cars in total based on a donor nismo gtr but actually quite substantially reworked all of the bodywork is changed the roof line is actually lower you can imagine the work that has to go into making that possible but you get this distinct dual tone particularly on this car with the satin gold against the gray of the paintwork but an entirely new look it also has more power as well and it was quite an experience to drive this car actually out at the by Autodrome, 50 years of the GTR, I suppose the ultimate R35 generation GTR, you could say, the official collaboration between the two. So Atal Design doing these OEM projects, in this case working with Nissan, as well as their own very, very ultra limited projects, and many more that we can't necessarily see and explore in full detail. Lots and lots of secrets, as you can imagine. But let's just whiz down quickly to have a look at this. The Zero Uno Duerta. You can see the bonnet latches, racing motorsport inspired carbon fiber body. This car is awaiting paintwork at the moment. It's just uh, the raw gray base. It's not been finished in the final uh, configuration if you're wondering why it has white mirror caps, for example. But just look at the design and the aggression of it. Totally unique, a distinct style, their own creation. And this car has that full wing as well that we've been uh, seeing teasers of as well uh, versus the car uh, that I've filmed with before actually that has uh, the regular lower wing we could say and you can just see those end plates at the side of it and the way it comes down with that spine over the rear deck as well but the Duerta the convertible the Targa roof panel here lifted off and removed you can see that that would be placed uh, back on top but the combination of a V10 naturally aspirated V10 and roof down is definitely pretty epic and it also has the seven speed dual clutch gearbox which just bangs in the gears but when you're looking around here look how open this is behind those rear tires look at those exhaust tailpipes as well at the back entirely designed in-house 
Zero Uno Duetta here in Torino. Even those cutaways there behind the front wheels, really special and inside as well. Look at this, look at the steering wheel. They've added some of their own touches to it that you can see uh, around the interior too. Fitting very, very nicely. Some exposed carbon on the rear uh, deck area between the buttresses. This is a super, super cool looking thing. Zero Uno Duetta. Gonna be heading towards a customer in not too long. So this is where the cars come together. You can see actually just up there behind me, Ultra Limited Series. They're really, really limited projects. We're talking five units. It could be 50 units of the Nissan GTR 50. Not big numbers by any stretch of the imagination. Exclusivity and, uh, well, I think there might be some pretty exciting things coming in the future too. Nonetheless, amazing to see where they are literally assembled and brought together. The surrounding rooms where various different components are manufactured, also the design uh, and engineering departments. The company actually employs about a thousand people uh, in total to work on everything that they're doing. And as we've seen, going from the Q2 at one extreme to this at the other, quite a broad range of different products being worked on. Anywho, awesome to have a quick look in here, but we best head on. That pretty much concludes then today's visit to Atal Design. We've come back up to the museum, surrounded again by their magnificent cars. But what a place to come to visit, to explore, to see behind the scenes, to see some of the engineering, the design, the virtual reality, the HMI interface, the way it's all set up. Really quite incredible, to be honest. And of course, seeing and learning a little more about the Zero Unos and the Nissan GTR 50 by Atal Design as well. So a big thanks to the team here. What an awesome opportunity. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video too. That's it for now though. I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.